Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be updating you and using the products that I've recently bought in the last couple of months. And I'm gonna be updating you on my thoughts now that I've had the chance to use them for a lot longer. We have a lot of product talk today. I'm also trying out the new Pat McGrath Labs Dark Star Mascara for this first time. And you also get a tutorial on this beautiful look. So if you are interested in that, then just keep watching. <laughs> Hello dear friends of mine, it has been a hot hot minute since I've sat down and applied makeup with you guys. I figured we'd do this type of video with this style today and just put makeup on, chat about these new products, how I'm feeling about them, get a good look together, and yeah. So I was going through my makeup purchases in the last couple of months, and I picked products that I feel like I haven't touched on since I really reviewed it. Like, you know, I purchased the Natasha Denona bronze collection. I've talked about that time and time again. I'm not gonna mention that in this video. These are products that I feel like I could definitely give you guys some more thoughts after initially talking about them in my videos, just to kind of update you, you know? I don't do these videos often, but when I do, they're really good. So for primer, I actually did not have a primer. I tried the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Serum. I got a sample of it the other day. I guess we're kind of trying this together. And the first time I used it, it actually caused some pilling with the foundation that I put on top. So I'm going to see if that is the case today. So this is a newer product. It's just a sample. From what I've experienced the first time using it, I don't think it's going to be a purchase that I will be making because this serum is quite expensive. Expensive. It does sink into the skin very nicely. It's very thin. It leaves a little bit of tackiness to the skin I don't really know that this is necessarily for pre makeup, but it's nice and moisturizing So that's how I'm going to use it. I like how it feels. It's very expensive I don't really think it's worth it But it does hydrate my skin and leave it feeling nice for makeup But if you can get a sample, it's worth sampling it anything other than that personally I'm not too moved by it. So I reviewed two foundations that I want to update you guys on. So one is the Dior Forever Summer Skin. I kind of used this once and then never talked about it again. And then the other one is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. So the reason I haven't really updated you guys on this one is because the color on this is so off. I'm like almost embarrassed to wear it. They had this weird color range and I ordered light and this is not for light skin. Apparently the colors were mixed up. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's unacceptable. This is not a light shade. It's definitely for a medium skin tone. I like this. I don't love it. I think after a couple hours, I get a little bit too oily. So I've been liking this to thin out thicker foundations that are too light on me. So for me, this has worked good as a mixing foundation. On its own, it's very, 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 very dewy. So if you like a dewy foundation, you may like this, but I think it's a bit much. I don't really think it's worth the money. The color range is unacceptable and whatever problems that they had, it's just Dior makes such amazing base products and they really didn't amaze me this time. I think it's okay, but there's just so many issues with it. I'll continue to use it and mix it with other foundations, but it doesn't stand alone, and a foundation should stand alone. On the other hand, the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation has impressed me a lot. That's the foundation I'm going to use today for you guys. I love this foundation. I think it's so good. I think it's so great for the price. Now, $16, I feel like, is a bit pricey, especially for ColourPop, but I will say the quality is worth the $16. I think it looks really healthy on the skin. I like that even though it says it's a hydrating foundation it's not too dewy or anything like it gives you a actual natural finish I think if you do have some dry patches this will emphasize that so just be aware but overall wear time on this is really good the finish I like it's very natural it has a nice medium coverage I would say you can't really build it up any more than that but I just think it looks beautiful on the skin and it wears beautifully as well which is important let me zoom again so you guys can see a little bit better and I don't know if you just saw but it blended in with little to no effort. I have mine in the shade medium A5N, which I'll argue is like a touch too dark on me, but you can barely tell. It's a pretty decent shade match. I'm gonna put a little extra love in the areas right here and right here. Since my review, I am definitely still loving this and I'm liking this more than I like the summer skin. I don't wanna push you away from buying the Dior. If you like a really, really glowy light coverage foundation for summer, this might be for you. Personally, I didn't find the wear time to be the greatest on me and I like 
the ColourPop better. So now let's move on to brows. I wasn't going to feature brows because I feel like I've talked about the product I'm about to talk about enough, but I figured it's pretty new, so I might as well use it. So the Marc Jacobs Brow Wow Duo I have been loving, and it's been a new regular in my routine. The only thing I would say that I don't like about it is it gives a little bit too much color than I'm looking for because I'm so used to using powders or even the Benefit Precisely My Brow. Like, it's a little bit more powdery. It doesn't deposit so much color at once. Whereas this, it's a bit more of a creamy consistency. So what you lay down is a lot when you press it onto your brow. So for me, I definitely have to use a lighter hand with this, but it's a beautiful product. It blends out really nicely. And I do like how if you make a mistake, since it is so creamy, you can kind of just rub it away. And then if it looks too harsh or dark on your brows, you take a spoolie and it blends out really evenly. So I've been liking this product a lot. Like I said, I don't have a lot of eyebrow products in my collection. So this one is good enough that it's made its way into my regular eyebrow routine. I've been enjoying it a lot. And then on the other side, you get a brow gel. And I really feel like this brow gel works. It is slightly tinted, but it's not tinted to where it really adds anything to your brows unless you don't have anything on your brows. So if you don't have anything on your brows, you can kind of see the tintedness. But if you lay down that initial layer of color with the pencil, you really can't tell that it's tinted. It is so faint. But I do like that the brow gel is just attached to it. And I think it does a good job of controlling my brows, honestly. So I'm going to throw on just a little bit of concealer and powder since I don't have anything new for you guys. And then we'll be back to talk about some other products. So I just used the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. And then I brought out my ABH translucent setting powder. I haven't used this in such a long time. I wanted to give it a little bit of attention. Let's move on to bronzer. And I feel like this might be the most helpful part of this video for you guys. I talked about it on my Instagram story. So if you aren't following me, make sure you are. I decided that I was going to give my Gucci bronzer to my mom. This is the shade number two. And I did a whole review on it and I definitely had to work to make it work for me. You could see even in the video, it was definitely too dark. It made me look a little bit dirty, but I liked the formula. So I was kind of justifying that. In no way should number two be this dark. It was significantly darker than all of the other bronzers in my collection and I had to lightly press my brush in, tap it off a lot, and very lightly apply it to my face to get it to work for me. And I figured for $62, that just wasn't worth it. It became available on Selfridges. I decided to give number two to my mom, who is an NC40, and it does look beautiful on her, but even she also has to use a light hand with this color. So I picked up number one, and then my mom also picked up number three. So now I have one, two, and three to compare for you guys. And I thought number one was going to be too pink. I've only swatched it so I'm gonna try it today for you guys. Here's number two. The difference between one and two is shocking really and what's even more shocking is number three which is lighter than number two. So here's number three and here's number two. So number two is deeper. Number three you can see is more golden. I wish in my review I had all three of these to show you guys, but I wasn't about to buy three bronzers, but here we are, three bronzers later. And I'm gonna swatch these for you guys so you can see the differences in color and tone. I don't know who made these colors, these colors, cause it's weird. So here is one, here is two, here is three. So two and three are definitely darker. And one I'm going to use today, it's a little bit more pink. Three has a little bit more gold too it and this one is a little bit more red so if you're anything from a fair complexion to a light medium complexion I would recommend number one depending on your undertone of course that dictates things and then I would move to number three especially if you like a more golden undertone and if you want a deeper more red undertone go number two so this alone is part of the reason why I wanted to do this video so that I could update you on these dang bronzers so I'm actually gonna try number one I haven't tried it on my face yet but I'm excited to because I love the formula of these. Number two was just crazy dark on me. So let's try number one. Oh my gosh, you guys, much better. I feel like I can comfortably use this bronzer now. I'm gonna use number one on this side and we'll try number three on the other. I'm using a Sonia G Face Pro brush. It definitely is a little bit more pink and I typically don't prefer that, but it, it does add a little bit more of an actual sunburnt kind of glow to the face so in that way it's more natural but the formula is killing it I definitely prefer this color so I'm gonna try number three on this side just to see the difference okay I mean 
use a light hand. You still get a lot of pigment from that, but after I work it out, I prefer this tone. I do. I wish it was like a shade or two lighter so that it would complement me better, but I like the golden undertone that this has. So here is shade one. Here is shade three. I'm, I made myself look a little bit dirty. <laughs> Uh, but I'm definitely much happier with having number one in my collection, but number three is also very pretty, but I think if you're a bit deeper than me, I like number three a lot. I think number one is going to be good for those up to a light medium complexion if you're okay with the pinker undertone. So I hope that was helpful. I definitely wanted to get that information to you guys. So we're gonna move on to the eyes so that way I can use that to dictate what blush I use. But I've been enjoying the Kaleidos Tone Activator Eye Primer. They sent along their whole collection to me and I didn't really get back to you guys about what I thought about this, but I've been using this a lot in my tutorials. It's very watery and and normally I like to use a synthetic brush to apply my bases, but I do find that I prefer to use my finger to spread this out. It just goes on much more smooth. It gives you just a little bit of coverage to the lid, which I like. And I wish they would come out with a deeper shade for those with a deeper complexion so it could be more natural. But also if you have a deeper complexion, this shade would work if you really want those colors to pop. And I don't really have a problem with longevity of shadows but I haven't noticed anything bad with this primer as far as longevity goes but again shadows stay pretty well on me so that hasn't been an issue but I really like it just because it mutes out my eyelid and I can also use it for cut creases because it's so thin it's very easy to work with so I've been enjoying this eye primer a lot I just wanted to share that with you guys so I'm gonna go off decide what to do do one eye so it's quicker for me to explain to you guys the second eye so I'll be back surprised we did a purple look like I always do but I feel like I've done a pretty good job of updating you guys and talking about palettes that I've tried these past couple months. I feel like there hasn't been a ton of new palettes, but there are two that I kind of want to circle back with you guys. So this is the Melt Cosmetics She's in Parties palette, and then also the Elf and J Kissa To The Rescue palette. I mixed colors from both palettes. So starting off with the She's in Parties, we're going to go with She's in Parties. And this is a shimmer shade. I don't think I used it in my tutorial, which is why I wanted to use it today. And I like the shade because it has a little bit of a red turn to it and you can actually use it in the crease. I'm using it in the crease today. And I gave this palette a sparkling review. I think it has fantastic quality and I still do. And you'll see I'm using this shimmer shade in my crease and it's applying so beautifully. And a lot of times, you know, Melt can be inconsistent in their quality, but I think from what I've tried from Melt and it hasn't been everything they've come out with, but from what I've tried, this is the best quality palette that I have experience with them which I think is awesome because it's purples and purples are harder to create. The only thing that I don't really like and I've got to be honest about this is I don't like this color story. It's just too dark and grungy for me. When I say I like purples, I like brighter purples, more blue based purples, lilac -y purples. For this palette you only have these four shades that are kind of light that I tend to gravitate for and then once you get into this region there's just so much depth in these shadows that I feel like they kind of do the same thing Thing on the eye and there's just no real discrepancies between the colors after you blend them out. Because my skin tone is lighter, I don't want to have so much depth on my eye, so I'll blend the deeper shades out. And when they're blended out, they kind of just look the same. So for me, it's not my color story. If you have a deeper skin tone or if you love the deep, dark, grungy, smoky eyes, this is the palette for you. The quality is there. But I don't love the color story. I don't feel comfortable reaching for this palette a lot. I have to do a lot of blending and I'm really only going to play with these colors up here. With a refer number 14 brush, we're going into Mean Streak. And again, this shade is so packed with pigment. It is so deep, but it also blends out really nice. You know, as a purple lover, I want to love this palette, and I do because the quality is great, but there's only so many looks that I can create that I personally feel comfortable with. So that's more so just a me problem, but if you are like me as far as your taste and color preference, I really feel like you might feel the same, but 
that's just, like I said, it's a me problem. The palette itself is a banging palette. The Elf to the Rescue palette, I dug in here because as you can see, we have more like almost blue-based purples here, just purples that I personally prefer and feel more comfortable with. So I'm going to start off with Sadie, just a matte shade, and I'm going to apply that all over my lid. So here's the thing with this palette. I gave it a pretty good review. I did share with you guys that I did struggle with some colors in this palette, and this palette's $20. And I I think it's a nice palette for $20. I particularly love the colors that Jay Kissa chose. I love the arrangement of colors that like how she laid them out. I think it makes it very easy for the beginner. But just on Elf's part, I mean, these aren't the best quality shadows, but for $20, I can justify that because these are hard colors to create, to formula, to work with in, in general. And if you are trying to sell it at a $20 price point, it's hard to achieve, it is. I'm gonna go in with confetti and I'm just going to apply that everywhere with my finger. So just know that when you get this palette, it's not going to be easy breezy, beautiful eye look like that. You are probably going to struggle with some colors. You're probably going to have some colors stick. The quality is not the greatest, but the price makes up for that in my opinion. And I think for $20, it's worth it. You can still get beautiful look. But that being said, I do have the skill set where I am able to make colors work that aren't as easy to work with. And if you don't have that type of skill set, you might not be able to get this palette to work for you. So you just need to judge based on your capabilities, what you're willing to put up with for shadows, is it worth for you to pay more to get better quality to not have to deal with what you need to do to get this to work or are you never going to use these colors and you just want these to add pops and you're looking for an affordable way to do it this might be good for you or if you do think you have the skill set and you want to spend only $20 on a product like this I would say go for it I think it's a good palette but just know what you're getting yourself into the last thing I'm going to do as far as shadow is I'm taking skeleton kiss from the melt palette and I'm using that as an inner corner highlight and just down here. Do you see just how nicely the different tones of purple worked? I really like this look a lot. Not that it looks much different than all of the other looks that I create, but I like it. So, so those are two palettes that I wanted to update you guys on. Something else that I purchased from Charlotte Tilbury this past month is the uh, Charlotte Tilbury the Feline Flick. So this isn't a new product, like very, very new, but it's new to me. I got the felt liner one. I can't talk and do this, so give me a second. I do like this. I don't know that I love a felt tip, but it is a nice black eyeliner. I get a lot of product that comes out. There is a little bit of a shine to it. It's not completely matte and the wearability is really great. I mean, it's a liquid liner. I like it. I prefer, I think, my Pat McGrath to this one, but I've been enjoying it. It's nice. I'm not mad that I picked it up. I don't think I'd pay full price for this again, but if it was a sale or like a gift with purchase kind of item, I wouldn't regret having this. Before I go to lashes and stuff, let's finish up the face makeup. I gave a raving review about the Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blush. I only got one shade and she's that girl. You guys, I love this. I think it's incredible. I still like to apply it the classic way. So even though he does suggest you do powder first and then the cream for a more natural look, I think it's a little bit softer for me and I feel like I have a little bit more control if I go in with the cream first. So I like this cream because it's very subtle. You can build it up though if you want a lot of color to show up. But if you just lightly pat your sponge in here, you can get a really nice natural wash and you don't need to put powder on top if you don't want to. You can just use this as a cream blush. You can use it however you like. If I'm just feeling a cream look, I'll just do this. For video's sake, I am gonna put the powder over, but I'm so in love with this cream formula that I really just don't even care for the powder. And the powder is good. I feel like the powder in here is better than his original powder formula. And that could just be because I am layering this over the cream. So I feel like this does need to have a lighter pigmentation. But overall, I was not impressed really with his powder blushes. I thought they were okay. I thought they were a little bit too sheer than what I prefer, but these two working together I think are incredible and not only that just the cream product is everything. I talked about this in my $1,000 Sephora wish list tag that I wanted to purchase more colors of this because this wears beautifully. It looks good. I love the colors and I'm still so impressed. Still loving this. It's amazing. I don't think I have a highlight or anything to share with you guys so we'll stop the face makeup there and I'm just gonna take some of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless 
setting spray. And I definitely, in my review, said I want to wear this more so I can really tell you what I think. And you guys, I really love this. So it doesn't give you a dewy finish as I thought it would, but it actually helps more so with wear time. So I'm quickly going to spray it. I love the scent, first of all, and then you can almost feel it tightening your face when you apply it. It's not uncomfortable, but you can feel it working, you know? It's helping that makeup stay in place longer, and I swear, you guys, whenever I wear this, my makeup lasts longer. I'm not even kidding. I never really believed in setting sprays like this, but I this works and it also presses the makeup together. I would say it's a not as heavy duty version of the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I don't know, I feel like the Urban Decay can be a little bit harsh sometimes. This one is not as harsh and it does add a very, very natural glow to the face, but nothing crazy. But what I've noticed this does is it almost also like smooths and perfects my makeup as well. I feel like when I put this on, my makeup looks smoother, just like it said it would. And it also lasts Better. I think this is an amazing product, you guys. It's so good. For mascara, I actually got the Pat McGrath Labs Dark Star Mascara today, so I'll try it on camera with you guys. I didn't want to get a review up right away on this for you guys because I'm very picky about mascaras and I really hate mascaras on the first use, so I just feel like it wouldn't be fair, it wouldn't be accurate. I want to use this for at least a week or two before I give you guys an update, but I thought I would do a first impressions for this video anyways. The regular Pat McGrath mascara is my favorite you guys so that's why I was really excited about this one to see if it was better or not I'll probably also do a comparison with the normal one in my review video but for now I'm just going to quietly apply this and I'll kind of tell you what I'm thinking so I want to say I did about a healthy two coats and you guys I think I like it so it's uh kind of here's what the spoolie looks like it's like a comb kind of spoolie which I really like I feel like that helped separate my lashes I liked the way that it built I love how my lower lashes are looking in particular it's kind of hard to tell the upper lashes because of my thick black liner that I have on my eyes but first impression I definitely do like it I want to do a side by side with the original mascara to really see what I think but for a first time wear this dark stuff Star mascara is not bad but definitely want to continue using it because I have very very tiny lashes so it takes a long time for me to decide what I think of a mascara but in case you were wondering there's my quick thoughts so I'm gonna put on some falsies because this look requires some falsies and then I'll go over the remainder products okay lashes are on I went with my favorite Lily lashes in makeup by Samuel so I want to talk about some lip products that I've gotten to try over the last few weeks so again back to the pack Trita. so with his new collection he came out with new colors of these I chose oh she's single which is a bit more of a muted brown I really like his lip liners they aren't my favorite formula in the world but I like the shape of his lip liners they're kind of slanted so it's easy to apply thicker and thinner in some areas you can kind of turn it to get the full application or you can turn it again to just get a thinner line and I think this color is very nice it has a touch of warmth to it and he has a good lip liner formula it's not too creamy and not too waxy so I've used this a couple times since I mean I knew I liked the formula to begin with but I also have been enjoying the color and then he also came out with the oh she single lipstick he had a few other colors this is a color that I picked up it's a bit more of a nude color it matches with the lip liner a little bit more pinky neutral but very pretty a very nice lipstick formula I had never tried a bullet formula from him this is the first time he came out with it and I think he picked a very good formula this is matte so if you don't like matte lipsticks you won't like this but it's a very smooth not too drying formula so again I've still been enjoying this Charlotte Tilbury came out with a collection of three kind of wedding themed lipsticks and I have to admit it's not my favorite release from her I have the three lipsticks swatched right here they're just not colors I personally would go for on a daily basis and also they're wedding themed and I do bridal makeup and I really wouldn't use these colors too often in my kit I feel like brides don't really ask for these colors and I wore them periodically in videos just to get a feel for the colors and though I did like them I didn't love them if the colors speak out to you I mean definitely check out my review I do 
lip swatches and all of that. But I just feel like these were really deep and I wouldn't use these for a wedding. The quality is good, you know, but I just found myself forcing myself to wear these colors so I could get a feel for them for you guys and for my videos. But after I finished getting my feel for them, I put them down and I haven't really reached for them since. But again, Charlotte Tilbury has my favorite lipstick formula. So if you like the colors, I do recommend. And then the last item for this video, I have these Maybelline Superstay Matte Inks. So I did pick up the other formula in this collection. I haven't tried them yet, so I'll have to continue to keep you guys updated, but I have been loving these. So these are from their coffee collection. So these have a slight coffee scent. They smell a little bit more syrupy to me. I picked up two colors and I've never tried this formula from Maybelline and I have to say I'm very impressed. It's a very thin formula. It is drying because it is a matte formula, of course, but if you just do a really thin layer, it's quite comfortable. So the first one that I have here is Chai Genius and then I have Caramel Collector. So I'm a big, big coffee drinker or a hot drink drinker. I love chai teas, matchas, lattes, anything under the sun. The scent on these are not too strong. So if you're sensitive to scents, you're not going to be overwhelmed. You definitely do smell them. And as a coffee lover, I want to smell them. Doesn't smell like coffee, but I'm gonna put on a little bit of Chai Genius. This is not a new formula for Maybelline, but it's new to me and I love it. And it looks really good at this lip liner. I'm gonna use my finger to pat out the rest so I don't build up too much of the product, but really comfortable. And once it sets down, it's really good. I've been enjoying that a lot. I'm gonna zoom out really quickly, get myself together, get these swatches off of my arm, and I'll be right back. I hope you guys enjoyed the style of video. It was really fun to just put on makeup and talk on camera. I always feel much better when I update you guys on products because I feel like I leave you hanging sometimes. So let me know if you liked this video, if you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would appreciate it if you would take the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.